I started out, my dad bought me a 53 Ford. Paid $50 for it, I think. When it came time to fix it, I think at 14 I was mowing lawns. It was about your size. I think I mowed lawns for like two and three dollars a lawn. Yeah, so something went wrong with the car. There wasn't any way I had the money to fix it. So it would just like sit, you know, forever. I remember being in high school and I was in a automotive technology. And I took an art class and I made some drawings. And my art teacher, she was uh, critical of them, you know? And, and then she would like post them up. It's pretty weird, I thought. And then she came up to me and she says, uh, oh, are you thinking about going to art school? And I went, no. I said, I'm gonna be a mechanic. And she went, a fucking mechanic. She says, you got a lot of talent. You should be an artist. And I said, what would I do? How could I make money? So I told my dad, and he goes, yeah, I don't think he's making money. So you better stick with what you got. I got married at 20. I went to art school at night. Not, uh, not trying to graduate, but just trying to learn. But shit, it was easy for me. I was selling a lot, man. Unbelievable amount. I had stuff in stores, you know, tourist shops and shit. It was pretty good, and then I started doing more modern stuff. That was in the uh, 70s. And kind of started not selling as much, but I liked it a lot more. What can you do, right? I got a gallery in Houston, a really nice, nice contemporary modern, modern art gallery in Houston. But it just went nowhere, you know? And I felt like I did some of my best work then, in many ways, but it didn't go anywhere. And I went up on the street and then uh, it's like, well, fucking now what? <laughs> I ran out of fucking ideas here, you know? This guy came along, real rough fucker. He says, uh, you got a place to live? And I went, no. And he says, you got a job? I said, no. He says, can you do construction work? And I said, yeah. He says, well, I got a small remodeling company you want to work with. I said, yeah. Luck. Or just being honest, you know, of who you are and where you're at. Forget all the other bullshit. I mean, I didn't say, well, I used to be this really fucking famous artist of living in all these different exotic cities and shit. You know, I didn't say anything about that. There wasn't any sense in it. You know, that was gone. You know? Yeah, I'm gonna keep this one. It's everything that I want in a in a hot rod right now, you know. And it is a 32 Ford, so pretty classic hot rod. There's these classification, which guys are called traditionalists. Traditionalists, and they're very idealistic about it. You, know? you can make a model car, which comes in a cardboard box made by a manufacturer, and the parts are already there and you've got a set of instructions. So you follow the instructions and you make a model car. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that for these guys. Why, if they made hot rods in the 60s, <coughs> would somebody want to go back and make another one like they did in the 60s? Yeah, what would be the point? There's no purpose. And I'm sure a lot of people would say, well, you're only saying that because you can't do it. Yeah. But I can do it. Yeah. So I'd just be copying. And it ain't 1960, it's 2015. It is risky. 
Yeah, and uh, your risk being laughed at, your risk being uh, a failure. Well, I could care less about that. <laughs>